Hello, is everybody here? Um, okay, thank you. I hope you all enjoyed the film, uh, and I'd like to introduce the, uh, the director of the film, uh, Constance Marks. Thank you so much for coming out to our film, Being Elmo. We are so thrilled to be in this theater. This is really great stuff. Um, it always takes a team to make a film, and we have a few of the members of the team here tonight, uh, and one very special member and a half. Um, so I'd like to introduce them. First, I'd like to introduce you to James Miller, who is the director of photography and producer. And my hubby, uh, this is James, and uh, Corinne Lapook, who's our producer and an old high school friend. <laughs> Corinne and I were in um, film class together, and her father was my dentist in eighth grade. So. <laughs> uh, and, okay. and without further ado, please put your hands together for Mr. Kevin Clash. Everybody. <laughs> testing, testing, one, two, okay. Nice book. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna throw out some, uh, wanna hear some questions from you if you have any. Anybody, anybody, anybody? Any questions? Any questions about the movie, about anything? Yes. What did I feel? The first time I saw it? It was at a Sundance and I cried like a baby. <laughs> <laughs> no, we were, you know, it, what, what happens is, and Connie can talk about this, um, they, submitted, they submitted the doc early on, I don't know when, to, to Sundance. September. September, and then they tell you right before Thanksgiving. So there was a mad dash to finish it, so I was in the midst of helping them, you know, getting whatever pictures I could find or, or video to help, so I was more in that mode, and then, then you finally can rest and watch the movie, and I did that in Sundance, and finally saw it and really looked at it. And, and uh, of course, watching it with an audience was amazing, so, yeah, it was very emotional for me. Yeah, right here. Talking about my shy nature? No, I'm 51 now. <laughs> so, so the shyness was early on, prior to, it was pre, so when they got me, they couldn't shut me up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. When I first saw Elmo, yeah. The puppet, yeah. Well, um, Brian Mule, who was a puppeteer at the time, he, he was performing the character. He, he did a couple of shows with him. And uh, so th there was already kind of a Bible that was written for the character. So, uh, and then, uh, so, so there was specifics about him. And then Richard took him on, and, and, and then I took him. So there was some backstory uh, when I grabbed him up anyway. So Richard just asked me to do the voice, and he said, fine. You know, <laughs> it was that simple. Uh, and and that's, that's, that's really the way it happened. Sometimes, you know, when you, get, when you get a character, you play around with the voice, or somebody, you know, says, oh, can you do this, can you do that? Not with that one. It just, it just clicked, because uh, we all really knew what the character was, and we put our own spin on it, and that was my spin as far as that type of voice. Yeah. Yes. Can we actually have you use the mic to speak? Sure. This young lady right here with the little brown. You get a mic, you can take that home with you. I'm just kidding. <laughs> how do you um? How do you make the sound that when, like when, when Elmo talks? Voice? Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's a, it's a high pitch. It's a little. We call it falsetto. It's a falsetto voice. Mm -hmm. Hi, everybody. It's Elmo. <laughs> now please don't walk around talking. Like this. But yeah, it's it's a falsetto voice that I use. It's one of the voices. I have five voices, and that's one of the voices that I do. Okay, now make sure you give that mic to someone. <laughs> okay. Yes, yes. Oh, yes, uh, right oh, okay. oh, yes. Yeah. Um, we just came back from Toronto. My. Oh, I love my, Toronto. Uh, my granddaughter, 
a little girl just turned three, of course loves Elmo. <laughs> I was having a discussion with my wife, uh, if she were here. I wonder if, if she saw this film, uh, would, it, would it spoil the illusion for a kid who just turned three? No, not at all. And I'm just wondering how little kids about that age, after seeing you in person, let's say, yeah. does it interfere with the, does it spoil the illusion there, in any There's way? no spoil of the illusion at all. Adults don't have any control over a child's imagination. They keep it as long as they want. And a matter of fact, if I bring Elmo out and he starts talking to you, you turn into a five-year-old right there today. <laughs> you do, you do, you go back. I mean, every celebrity that comes into Sesame Street, they, they come in and they say, oh, and they turn into a five-year-old right there. I mean, you know, you keep, <laughs> see? see? That's Charlotte. Oh, really? Yep. Oh, that's not Charlotte. Hi. I'm sorry, it's sitting next to Charlotte's brother. So, uh, yeah, so, I mean, it's really, they see me as somebody carrying their friend around. They don't see me, you know, they don't see me on TV. They see Elmo all the time. It was funny, uh, Mel Gibson and, um, and Danny Glover had come in after doing one of the Lethal Weapons. And uh, Mel said he would bring some of the kids, and he didn't. And I said, well, why? He said, you know, because I didn't want to, I was concerned about breaking the illusion. And uh, I said, you don't have any control over that. I said, you missed out, you had your kids miss out on, on, on meeting Emma. <laughs> no, but uh, it really, it's, 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 it's a wonderful thing to see a child, you, you see it in the film, I mean, they don't really look at me. I love the little girl that said, hi, Mr. Clash, you know, when, when <laughs> just before, and then she still gave Elmo a hug. <laughs> <laughs> and then, of course, the child, when I was 17, saying, I, I see you, <laughs> I know you, you're working the puppet. Once in a while that happens, but even then he still believes. Yeah, yeah, right here. Run, 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 run. <laughs> um, that footage from when you were yes. 17, I was interested where that came from. It was a show called um, um, Big Blue Marble that was on PBS. And what it was, it was a wonderful program where um, these unbelievable um, uh, filmmakers would go around the world filming kids, young kids who would do, doing unusual <laughs> jobs at that age. And, uh, and they called up Kermit Love, and they asked Kermit, you know, do you know of someone, a young puppeteer? And he said, Kevin Clash. And so that's how that happened. They came down, and they spent two days in Baltimore with, uh, with me and my family, and I did a, a live show, and, and uh, I was shooting Caboose at the time with Stu Kerr, so they got that. They got some wonderful footage, and then they took me up to, they, came, they brought me up here to New York, and uh, then they filmed me with Kermit and doing some things and everything. And fortunately, Connie and, uh, and Corinne found that. And uh, of course, it's it's in the it's in the DVD. I mean, in the DVD, it's in the doc now. So, <laughs> it will be in the DVD. <laughs> yes. Well, it's obvious that puppeteering's in your DNA. But yes. How, how do you pass it on? How, is is there how more formal training now? You had to figure it out. Is there more formal training for people who are aspiring puppeteers? Formal training? Well, yeah. you can nowadays. I mean, you can you can uh, major in it. And in different different uh, universities now, so that's really cool. Uh, but you know, again, the, the 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 way it developed with me is just constantly doing it, being around it, you know, being a sponge to watching Jim Henson and Frank Oz and Dave Gulls and and uh, and Richard Hunt and Jerry Nelson, these unbelievable performers. Um, so you just soak it up as much as you can. Uh, we're gonna have Tao is gonna be on the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade with us. He's gonna. He's going to be on there uh, performing one of the Sesame Street characters, so he's looking forward to that. So, uh, yes, yeah, so a little tile is going to be there. Yes? Yes. Did you read? Did you read? Did you read her book? Well, did you read? Did you read her book about it? Yeah. No, you know Shannon. Well, maybe she will. You know, she's 18 now. She might still write a book. I don't know. <laughs> but right now, you know, she she is she's loved. She's enjoyed it. She there's been no negative other than Daddy. You know, when we talked about it, you know, come home and, and spend some time. And now we're hanging out and and skyping. And you know, I'm looking at her room to see if it's clean and at, at the at the university. She's actually at the University of Maryland College Park now. So, yeah. Uh, this yes. question is for the uh, filmmaker. Yes. Connie. What got you interested in this particular topic? What? Uh, my husband, for one, and my daughter, for another. Um, uh, James was shooting at Sesame Street and came home with a video one day of Kevin doing a little, uh, uh, Kevin performing Elmo for the camera uh, for our daughter. And uh, 
<laughs> and I was just blown away. I, just, I had always loved Elmo. I thought he was incredibly funny, and the manipulation of the puppet was extraordinary, and I wanted to know who was behind the puppet. And James said, oh, that's, that's Kevin. And uh, we arranged to have lunch, and that was the beginning of it. It was from Kevin's generosity to, to create that little message for our All daughter. you have to do is feed me. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> it's totally true. <laughs> please, I'm in New York. Please, I'm a foodie. Definitely. Yes. Thank you so much. Um, you might recognize us because our our son um, is the closest friend of Elmo. So. <laughs> Really? You spend a lot of time in our house. I'm sure okay. everybody else. Of course, I recognize. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I, <laughs> along with loving Elmo, I the film is such an inspiration to see someone who followed their dreams, and it seems like you came right into what you needed to be doing. And what I well, wonder that's what, is one of the things. I mean, I really want everybody, you know, especially young kids, to really, you know, just, aspire, you know, really, really, you know, whatever they truly want to do, and they, they and they love it, do it, do it, do it, do it, do it. Because you see, I mean, I started when I was 10, so, and kept doing it, it's, and it's been a wonderful ride. I, I was wondering, cause, because it's, it's amazing, and I wonder how many kids miss that path, and I wonder how your parents, with the role they took, what advice would you give to parents to help your children find exactly the spot they need to be? Just really, you know, stay in their lives, focus on them, you know, ob observe what they're doing, you know, don't, <laughs> Listen, we, we, we have it hard, you know, it's, it's challenging because, you know, now mom and dad are working, you know, so it's really challenging. But really, when you have that time, it's not maybe the amount, amount of quantity time, it's the amount of quality, and really focus on it. Don't say you have to because it's your child, but, but really engage in, in, in their lives, and, and you'll find that they, they will start to, I mean, listen, when you're young like that, you're going to go all over the place, you know. Uh, I stayed focused on... What I did, I mean, that's that was it. But my mom and dad was very, very connected to to all of uh, my brothers and sisters as far as what we were doing. Not not just you know, they wanted to make sure we were doing the right things too, but uh, really focusing on uh, what we truly enjoyed and, and encouraging us with that. They've always that way. Oh, you know what? I'm gonna have to do a little line real quick because we got some little kids here that we need to just bring them, bring them down, bring them down here, the young kids. Bring them right down here because uh, they've been. Yeah, all the little kids. See, see, look. See, because he's saying it's about time. So just bring all the kids down, all the young kids right down here. Just because they, they're going to have to leave. Mommy and daddy going to have to leave. One other question before Elmo will come out. And, uh, and I'll come back and ask some questions. I just want to make sure. <laughs> see, Elmo. Okay, see. Hold on one second. We walk around with these bags all over the place, and we have kids following us. Charlotte, come.
couple other questions. Yes. Hi, Kevin. <coughs> um, I just want to tell you I'm your biggest fan. I can top all these people here. I'm <laughs> sure of it. I met you when I was four years old on the oh, really? of Sesame Street. I have a picture. I want to show it to you. Wow. After. Yep. Um, cool. And I was in Sesame Street Parents Magazine with my collection of Elmo's. Great. So I work in the theater, and I was just wondering if you have anything special that you do to get into the character of Elmo. No, just put it on. <laughs> just put it on, and it happens. No, that's, that's about you. it. With any character, it's, it's, it's that easy. Yeah, a couple other questions. Yes. Here, can I yes. Oh, well, this is, uh, first of all, a couple things I want to say, and then a question for Connie. Sure. First of all, um, Connie and I have, uh, our daughters are the same age. Ah. And when my daughter, Antonia, who's now 12, she was in love with Elmo. And the first time I took her to the Central Park Children's Zoo, she was maybe a year and a half old. And here I'm thinking, she's going to be so psyched. She's going to see all these great little animals. A kid walks in with an Elmo backpack. <laughs> and all she says is, look, Elmo, Elmo, Elmo. So she was freaking out. We have, cool. you know, Elmo Palooza, the best of Elmo, cool. everything. So um, I, I wanted to say I am so struck by your loyalty that you had early on. I think that is an amazing thing to all the people that you worked with who took you each step of the way. Really well, thank you. remarkable. Well, I had some great mentors, <laughs> phenomenal mentors. And, you know, it, it, first of all, I was beaming through the whole movie, Connie, <laughs> just smiling through the whole thing. How did you know when you got into this whole thing with Kevin what a beautiful story this would be? You know, that this is a man who followed his dreams and, you know, each step of the way. Did you know that? I had lunch with him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I knew. I had lunch with him. So you knew. Yeah. Amazing film. Thank you. Yes. Now, that, you know, it's funny. This little, one, a little kid was trying to pull Elmo off my hand. There's this wonderful story. I was in Kansas City somewhere, and, and there was a, a fair that was happening. And, and so uh, um, Allison Bartlett, who plays Gina, and, and Carmen Ospart plays Rosita, was there. And... And I had Elmo, and, this, and we were just setting up, and the, the, one of the people that were working there had a little, uh, w w had their child, and the little, little, little girl had a diaper on, that's all she had. And it was Sesame Street all over it. <laughs> and so I put Elmo on, and the little baby came over and uh, hugged Elmo, pulled him off my hand, took him over and sat on mommy's lap and was rocking <laughs> <Elmo>. <laughs> <laughs> It was really sweet. Another thing that, you know, when we're talking about as far as how celebrities, you know, turn into kids, Paul Rudd had come in and, uh, and, and did the show. He did it a couple of times, and this was the first time he came. And he was, like, in awe. He just, he would stop, and he saw the steps of one, two, three, and, and he'd stop and saw, the, you know, Big Bird's Nest and Oscar's trash can in Mr. Hooper's store. He would just, you would see him, and I would say, you're doing it again. And, yes, I am. I'm like, he was going crazy, and he was so excited about his two-year-old coming to, to, to see Sesame Street that day. And so he, the little, little kid came and he put him down, see this is Sesame Street. The little kid, his, his son just went right over, there was a little toy guitar and that was it. He was like, y you realize where you're at? <laughs> I said, no, nah, Paul, you know, you, I mean, uh, Paul Rudd, you know where you're at. It was really sweet. You, I kept seeing him turn into, again, a four-year-old. It's, it's a wonderful thing to see. It really is. A couple other questions, and I'm going to um, bring out Elmo out. He just wants to sing a song. Yes. Uh, why? Uh, we have a two-year-old who's obsessed with Elmo. I remember watching Ernie, and he's my favorite in the early 80s, and then Elmo appeared on the scene. What do you think makes Elmo, what qualities of Elmo attract little children so much? Because he's a little child. He's exactly the way, he's a mirror image of them. And then, and then he has the Muppet Edge that the adults like, that, that you know, Jim got us doing all the time. So he had that sense of humor, but they really, it's a mirror image. Kids love to laugh. They, w they want to be, you know, acknowledged 24 <laughs> seven. You know, in, in a second they could be crying, another second they could be angry, another second they could be happy again, you know? And so he really instills that and, he, and they, they relate to him that way. It's that positiveness that, that a kid has, that Elmo has also. And I think that's the relationship, that's, co that's the connection. Yes. She's for Klimt. Um, I was wondering if there was any
anything on the cutting I was wondering if there was anything oh, on the cutting room please. floor that you were really, really wanted to put in, but you just had to cut it out for time. Well, there's purposes. one thing that was really funny uh, about Tao, because uh, it was just like, you know, again, it was this wonderful uh, cycle that Connie wanted to show about a, a new new puppeteer. Um, and he came in, and, and we didn't know this until the footage came back, that he, uh, well, Tao is the little boy, you saw him, that, that's in the, that's in the in the dock at the end, and he um, he he was with his mom, and and this was uh, actually the the shop gave him a big plastic bag full of fur and foam and all of this stuff, and so <laughs> excuse me, he's standing there with it, and he says, um, "I just threw up in my mouth," <laughs> and his mom said, "What? Yeah, I, I I just I threw up in my mouth," and she said, "Why?" She had no idea. I mean, this was his dream come true. She, she understood, but she just didn't understand why he was throwing up in his mouth. <laughs> but it was really sweet. So we, I, you know, they kept trying to, I know Phil and, and Connie kept trying to find a place to put it. Uh, but it'll be in the DVD extra, I would think. We have one over here. But like actually, yeah, you, Connie, you wanted to say? Next year, the DVD will come out next year. Uh, and also about yeah, there, there was a lot of footage that didn't end up in the years. We had over 200 hours of footage. You know, and, and, and Kevin went to Katrina, post Katrina, and performed for kids down there. That was an amazing thing to see. We were in Brazil. We were, we were all over the place. DVD a, extras. Yeah, I did a, I did a thing, a, a song, uh, both uh, Eric Jacobson, who, perf who, sing, who performs Grover now, we got to sing a song that was tributing uh, uh, Paul Simon, and he actually came to the recording studio, and, and they shot that that you didn't get to see, unfortunately. But it was, I mean, all these wonderful things that you, it didn't, move the, sh the story along so we had to listen we're getting everybody's getting antsy so i'm gonna uh, put elmo on and we're gonna say goodbye to all of you he just wants to sing Aww. a song okay as i'm doing that one other one other question right, here. right here hi um speaking of mir mirror images i noticed in the film that when you are performing with the other muppeteers that your facial expressions are the only ones that reflect what elmo is doing how do you pass that on and instill that in others and keep the magic in yourself as well every well, day. It's something that naturally happens. I don't know what my face is doing. I'm not even concerned about me. You know, our our body and, and everything is a hindrance to making the puppet work. So uh, we really don't think about ourselves. So I know I look really embarrassing. I've seen it, uh, but we don't think about it. You know, it, it, we just do it, and and uh, whatever our face looks like, our face looks. All right. Spread a little joy inside your heart. Until it comes the time for us to part, we'll be together soon and time will fly. Cause we never really say, never really say, never really say goodbye. Actually, yeah, goodbye everybody. <laughs> Yeah, thank you so much. We, um, I know, I know. We love him too. Um, our website is beingalmo.com. We're only in this theater as long as people show up. So, come. so come. Please tell your friends to come. The afternoon was really light, so we need to get people in here. I'm just being frank. So, if you can, if you can help us get people in here, that would be fabulous. And uh, <coughs> our, you can hmm, twi Twitter, Facebook, beingalmo.com. If you want to vote for us to win an audience award at the Gotham's, you can go to beingalmo.com and vote for us. But I'm laying a lot on you right now. Just tell your friends to come. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah.